Leah Allen and I teach biology at the Rockville campus. And my presentation is going to be a little bit different from the others because I'm the only slacker without data. What happened was in the spring, we developed projects that we were supposed to implement in our classes this fall. But as you're gonna see in a minute, I ran into an issue where I couldn't teach the class that I had developed a project for over the summer. So we had to change gears. So my initial project was targeted at non-majors biology, uh, bio 101. In this course, one of the goals is to get students to appreciate scientific information. And by the end of the course, they're choosing a scientific article that they're going to summarize and they're going to do a little presentation on for the rest of us. The only problem is when I ask them, even with its very strict guidelines, right? Step by step, here's how you find a good article with, with fact-based information, not opinion. Often, I get articles that run the gamut. Some, like you can see here, just total garbage, right? So, <laughs> and there's an approval process, but that makes the approval process very lengthy and uh, traumatic for some of my students. So, my goal with my initial project was to do web quests starting in the first week of class where the students would be looking at various websites and having to assess in groups the utility of the information there. Is it a blog from Joe Schmo that happens to not believe in GMOs? Or is it something from a real scientific uh, fact-based website? But like I said, I had to change gears. And the reason why is because we had a problem over the summer. I teach anatomy and physiology as well, and I'm one of the course coordinators from that. Well, before summer one ever began, the problem, like I said, it was a good problem, was that we had too many students that wanted to take anatomy one at the Rockville campus. In fact, we had so many students, we could have filled a whole other class if only we'd had this space. So I talked with my dean about how to, how to fix this problem in the future. And we decided it was a good idea to develop a fully online Human Anatomy One course. Not hybrid, lecture and lab online. And yeah, that's a challenge. That is a challenge, but I use a lot of technology in my classes, so I felt like it was doable, even if it meant having to rework my plan. So as I was thinking about creating this course, I thought back and reflected on a lot of the things that we had learned in SET, and man, did we learn a lot. This is only a handful of what we studied. We studied evidence-based techniques that improve student success in courses. And I can't tell you that any one specific book here inspired me, but there were some common themes, one being to get your students to care about the information in your class. And to do that by making the information active and engaging, giving them real world problems. Two, create a sense of community in your class. One where they're comfortable with sharing ideas, which isn't always easy to do. And I felt like that might be an extra challenge in an online format where, let's be real, if you've ever looked at reviews for any business, right, they're, <laughs> they're either really great or awful. So <laughs> I decided to take this information and use it to address three main concerns with this online course that I was developing. I have a bunch of lecture videos that are pre-recorded from previous semesters, over 20 hours worth of video of me teaching but I don't want the students to passively watch it. I don't want them to watch it like they're watching a movie, right? They should be active with the information. Two, I do want to develop that sense of community with this online course. The students are gonna be there with their computer a lot of the time. I want them to have a sense that they're not just there alone with their computer. They have help from me and they have help from the other students. And while I'm doing that, I want to help them develop a growth mindset, which is something that I want in all of my classes anyway. So to address these main concerns, <coughs> I 
I developed basically two ends to my project. One, I reviewed those over 20 hours worth of video and I popped them into a new program. I, they usually are on YouTube. Now they're in Edpuzzle, which luckily enough, Candon um, introduced us to that program at the start of the fall. The thing I like about this program is it allows the instructor to incorporate graded questions that the students have to answer as they're going through the video. So they can't just passively listen. They have to stop, they have to think, and that question's going to be graded, so they better have been paying attention and taking notes as they were watching that video. So that's one part. The other part, to develop a sense of community and a growth mindset, I wanted to develop some, some skills related to metacognition. So like a positive uh, metacognitive cycle, if you will. So first thing I want the students to do is I want them to create a plan for how they're going to study. Then they need to be actively assessing how well that's going. They need to be monitoring what they're doing with their study habits and are they getting anything out of that time. Then they'll evaluate it later after they've taken a test. And how am I going to do this? Well, with the discussion board. So traditionally at MC, when we're teaching an online class, the discussion boards are the place where we have the fact-based questions. I moved those out into another program, which freed up space in the discussion board to develop metacognition. So, beginning on day one, on day one, the students are focused on how they're going to study for this course. They get tips from me about what they need to be doing, and it's intense. It's going to be over the summer. I usually see them four days a week, four hours each day, not to mention the study time outside of class. So, and, and you know, in addition to all this language from me, as you can see, I've incorporated videos from other sources. So from previous nursing students that are now in their careers, what worked, and from authors that we studied in SAT. And then they're going to go on the discussion board and they're going to report to me and their peers about their plan, and they're going to give each other feedback, encouraging, positive feedback on their plans. After that, they'll be monitoring their progress in two ways. One with a muddiness point modification, basically, where they're going to tell us each week what was the most confusing thing in lecture and lab, why they thought it was confusing, and if they found anything to help themselves clarify that point. If they didn't, that's okay. That's why they're weighing in with their peers. Hopefully somebody else has a fix if they didn't find one. They also will be monitoring their progress by reflecting on how where their plan's going. Are they, um, are they falling behind with that timing? If so, what are they going to change to fix it? And after they take their first test, they'll be evaluating similarly. What's working, what's not, and if it's not working, how are they going to fix it? Over the course of the summer, I'll be assessing how this is working uh, with a couple of different means. One, I'm going to give the students surveys at the middle of the semester and at the end to see how they felt about Ed Puzzle questions, the video questions, and these discussion boards. I also want to see if there's any correlation between how they performed on the video-based questions and um, on their exams, and this would be a, a little bit harder to do because we don't have as many fully online courses, but in a perfect world, I, what I hope I can do, I need to talk with my dean more about this, is compare the DFW rates in this course to other fully online biology courses. And thank you all, I need to hand this off to Joanne now because I'm right at the 10 minute mark. <laughs>